Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Thank you so much for stopping by today. And before we start, I just want to ask you to please subscribe. I have been looking at some of the analytics that YouTube gives me and there is a lot of you who aren't subscribed. So please click there on the subscribe button. Also tap on the bell, the notification, so you don't miss when I upload a video. I usually say that towards the end, but let's switch it up and let's say it at the beginning. Also, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna see a few little things in this video that are slightly different and I've had a lot of fun putting it together. So let's hop into what I made. If you watched my June sewing plans, you know I was heavily gonna be oriented towards jumpsuits for the first time ever. Just motivated by the challenge um, thing that's going on on Instagram. I've participated every year and I didn't want you know this year to be different just because it was jumpsuits. So I decided to make three. I've made two already of the ones I mentioned and today and on the next video you're gonna see uh, the two different jumpsuits that I made and the different experience I had making them. I know many of you will never make a jumpsuit because I was in the same boat just a few weeks ago but actually the pattern I'm about to review has a, another option too. <laughs> So it's, it's a pattern that has a lot of options. And this is the parasol trousers and jumpsuit by Ensemble Patterns. I will put a picture here so you can see all the options. It, it's got a myriad of options, this pattern. It's not only a jumpsuit. So the bodice here is like a crossover bodice, front and back, and it's lined. And it's got two types of waistline finishes, one with a, a casing and elastic with a tie, and the other one is with belt loops, and then you create a fabric belt to cinch in at the waist. The trousers can be totally normal with a fly shield, fitted at the waist and hips, totally normal. Or there's another option of the pants that are wider at the, at the waist to fit the bodice of the jumpsuit. The two options for the trousers all have in common that they have three pattern pieces per leg. So there's a middle seam running down your legs in the front and the back of you. There are patch pockets that are inserted into one of the seams of the trousers. All these trousers have three length options, shorts, there's a cropped length and a full length. For a more flowy look, they recommend rayon, crepe, tensile, that type of fabric, but you can also make it out of more structured fabrics for a more structured look. So then you have linen, cotton, twill, that sort of thing. The sizing for this pattern comes from size 0 to 18 US with a bust of 32 to 44 inches and hips of 35 to 47 inches. Now the ease around the waist is, is significant. It's 7 inches and that's because you need to pull up your pants for the jumpsuit version. For the slim fitting pants at the waist and hips, the ease around the waist is only one inch. And that makes sense because they are, you know, like fitted trousers. Now at the hips, the positive ease is one and a half inches. And that's appropriate for trousers. That's an appropriate type of ease for trousers. However, I'm making a jumpsuit out of viscose, or rayon, if you want to call it like that. And I thought I wanted to have a bit more ease than one and a half inches. If I was making it out of a more structured fabric, I would make it totally, you know, uh, with that ease. So my size is 14. I chose a 14 and that is the waist I wanted, but I wanted to blend out to size 16 just to have a little bit more ease due to my fabric choice. So that is the decision I made. I have to point out something about the sizing that just jumped at my attention. I've never seen this before. And basically the smallest size is drafted for a five foot three height. And as the sizes start getting bigger towards size 18, it's drafted for five foot seven. So I don't understand that. Um, I really don't understand why a designer would assume that a size zero would be shorter and a size 18 would be taller. I've been in the past a size six, a size eight with the same height, five foot eight. And I've been bigger than this with the same height. Have you ever seen this on a, a pattern before? I'd never seen that. So what did I do? I did not use the bodice of this jumpsuit. I think it's super cute, I totally go for it, but there are two things that put me off. One, it's my first jumpsuit, I want to go the safe route, <laughs> I want to make something I know is going to fit, and I don't want to be like fiddling, you know, this pattern doesn't offer cup sizes on the bodice, so you know, you have to make a muslin, and I will revisit this bodice, and I do like it, it's self-lined, 
it's crossed over in the front and the back i think it's really cool and it's sleeveless you know but this pattern has the option of combining the bodice with the orchid midi dress from chalk and notch and that is a collaboration they did the two brands ensemble patterns and chalk and notch i could perfectly use the bodice of this pattern of the parasol and mash it with the orchid midi skirt and vice versa use the orchid midi bodice for these trousers so that is what i've done and i know the fit i already made the orchid midi dress i know i made a size 14 with a cd cup you know size and it fits perfect the length of the bodice is perfect so it's one less stress of my mind when i'm already tackling something that is giving me a lot of anxiety <laughs> you don't know how i was feeling when i was making this partially terrified and thinking have i just gotten a wasted fabric and a bunch of my sewing time to make something really pretty that i'm not gonna actually wear but anyway let's leave that for <laughs> the end i'll tell you what my final thoughts are in up close and so personal we are going to go very personal very so personal <laughs> because i'm showing you the nitty-gritty of how i sew how i save fabric the rules that i'm happy to go against you, you're gonna see exactly how i sew and how i achieve things with minimal minimal fabric so let's hop into that I'm going to show you how I blend easily from a size 14 at the waist to a 16 at the hips. These trousers have three pattern pieces. So basically here on the top, I have two lines, the 14 and the 16 everywhere. So I want to keep the length of the pants at the size 16. That's why I'm starting there, but that's the 14 width. And then at the notch here, I've just drawn a gentle line tapering in from the 14 to the 16. And I've done that for all the pattern pieces. See, I'm starting there at the 14, keeping the length of the 16 on the top, and then tapering out all the way to 16. Same as on these, exactly the same. Now, what am I gonna do with these? I'm going to do the size 16 here, because this is actually the hips. This is where I need the space of the 16. So all the modifications are done at the top area of the trousers because that's where I want to bring in the waist to the 14. This is my crazy layout. I have three pant pieces for the jumpsuit there, the middle one and the two lateral ones. The front bodice piece is on the cross grain and I'm not sorry about that. <laughs> and the back bodice is there on the fold on the normal grain line the inner yoke that i'm going to do with the fabric and it's going to have a seam in the middle because i can't put it on the fold for the back and front yoke pieces and the waistband i'm going to do it out of this leftover linen from the liliana jacket it all came out of 140 centimeters and of course i've shortened this look how much so this will this is going to be like short here i have the pattern pieces for the bodice that's the back the back yoke the inner back yoke the front two yokes and the two bodice pieces for the front now the front has been cut on the cross grain that is on the grain line you can see the direction of the leaves going that way but it's not a bad thing and I'm not sorry it was the only way to make this garment and I'm gonna go with it now this front part of the bodice here this is cut on the bias right there very fragile i don't even want to look at it i'm going to stay stitch it and i have measured the pattern piece from here to there measures 44 centimeters and after i stay stitch i'm going to measure it to see if it's lengthened or gotten misshapen so i can get it back to that length so then i can apply the binding and carry on like normal i really want to protect this area because i don't like gaping at the neckline These are the pattern pieces for the parasol trousers that are going to match the orchid midi bodice. So there's three pattern pieces that are going to form one leg. This is like a center one and then you have the back crotch there and the front. You can tell at the waist the curve goes up because it's higher at the back and lower at the front. For the back there are double notches there that I've marked in red and for the front single. So it's very easy to put one leg together. Once I have one leg together and the other leg together, I will, you know, 
support the pants together at the crotch seams. This is a little pattern piece that will be interfaced that will form five button loops that will go attached at the waistline. And then there's this long piece that I cut in linen that is going to be like the belt that will go through the loops to tie in at the waist instead of using the elastic option. I've decided to put the patch pockets on the side of the trousers. Initially I wasn't going to, but then I thought, yeah, you know, it's going to match the yokes that are contrast linen. I had barely any left. So you see a center seam there that I had to add in to piece my pocket piece. So I just folded it in half and just matched, you know. The other change I had to do was narrow it by half a centimeter because it wouldn't fit in the fabric. But in the grand scheme of things, that tiny narrowed adjustment is not going to be noticeable. There is a facing piece for the pocket like that. And I think if I made it in the linen, it would be super bulky. I don't want the pockets weighing the pants down because it's rayon, it's like a light fabric. So I used a scrap of the main fabric to make a tiny piece of bias tape that I'm going to use as a facing for the top of the pockets. Look at the scraps I've got left of the linen. I mean, this is scrap busting at its best. I really like doing this stuff. The short edge here and the bottom, I have done a stitch there, like a guiding uh, stitch that is going to help me press under. And then this is just going to be inside one of the seams on the pants. It, it's, these are the easiest pockets to, you know, to attach. And because they're patch pockets, they don't create bulk anyway. This is one of the pant legs. You can see this longer crotch here is for the back and the shorter one over there is for the front. There's a center piece there. There's double notches that you match here on the hip. I have gone and sewn and serged this seam. This other one that unites the center panel to the front has just been pinned. And here there is a notch there, right there. So this is actually where your pocket is going to be inserted. So when you bring your piece this way, the, the higher part of the pocket, you know, the longer piece is going to be in there. And that top there has to match the notch on the other side. So in this area here is where I'm going to take the pins out and insert sandwich the pocket in between these two layers of fabric. So the tip of the pocket there is going to match the notch mark that I have there. And so the pocket is going to be in here within this seam allowance. The pattern uses 3 8 everywhere. I don't know if you can see that red line there, but that was my mark. So that is where the pocket starts in there and it's sandwiched between these two pattern pieces. Now when I open this, I have my front part here, my middle panel and my back over there. So you can see that the pocket is sort of sandwiched there and that seam closes up that side of the pocket. This side and this side has already been folded under. So after I sew this seam, I have to top stitch the pocket down there on that side and that side and that will complete the pocket. I can put my hand in there. The pocket has been inserted there. I have pressed all the seam, all this area and I have pinned here on the side and I'm going to use my edge foot to sew there. Down, pivot and there and then my pocket will be done. One of my legs is complete on the flat. I'm going to throw the other one on top. Both pockets are ready. And now I can just unite these crotches back with the back, the front with the front, sew them, and then do the inseams, and then the pants would be assembled and then ready to be put onto the bodice. I've quickly made up the pants. Here you can see the pockets there, and they look really cool. And now I have six little loops they had you put at the back where there's the seam one two three and then the other two on this seam on the front and so all this area around here was going to have nothing so i don't agree <laughs> 
So I'm going to put one there, one there. I've put a pin there to match the side seam and then two there on the front. So I'm adding an extra one and I think uh, the belt is going to be more supported all the way around the waist. This is going to be really hard to see but this is my, my, <laughs> my belt loop. The top part of the loop is going to be caught within the bodice there and the bottom one will be sewn onto the trousers on that seam there. So I'm going to fold that under like a centimeter, the bottom one. Flip this back, sew that there, really nice and secure. Then flip it back up, pin it there, right there. And then I can just attach, you know, the bodice to the trousers like normal. Okay, so here is my jumpsuit. This is a very, very nice rayon that I bought here locally with the leaf print. Some black, some cream, and the green. I love it. And you know, I've recently made the Liliana jacket out of seam work with this green linen. I always try to save and do my pattern placement. No matter how small amount of fabric, I want to I want to make sure I have little little chunks that I could use for things. And that was fortunate. I had a few scraps left of that linen. That was enough for this yoke, for this yoke, for the belt and the pockets. And the, the linen matches the pants. I think, <laughs> I think it's a cool look, at least for my aesthetic. I think it adds something nice. Linen is always very nice. And having the option of putting these pattern pieces out of a different fabric allowed me to make the jumpsuit with 1.4 meters. I bought one and a half, but after washing, I lost some length and that's normal, you know? <laughs> Also, I put my front bodice on the cross grain and that's not bad. It's not a bad thing, you know, nothing's going to happen. If I had made this out of stripes and put some pieces on the cross grain for the visual thing, most people would totally, totally not care that it was on the cross grain. So let's go with it. Let's pretend these are stripes and it's totally, totally justified. <laughs> So the leaves are going this way here and then on the rest uh, they're going down but it's not totally totally noticeable you know um, you saw me construct this uh, after I finished putting on the belt loops all I had to do was put the bodice right sides to the trousers so around them and that's it so uh, I made them as long as they could go I'm going to insert a clip here of me wearing it so this is the same bodice I already know, it crosses over, the coverage is awesome. I didn't go into the bodice at all for the video because I've already shown that. And there's a tie belt there. Little loops. I do need to put a little snap there. Uh, bias binding finish inside there and on the arm side. Really hard to get like a good shot of, of the length of me, I always have a hard time. But that's how it looks on. Super happy with this and I'm super happy I made it. But what are my thoughts on this? I love it. <laughs> I can't say anything else. <laughs> like it took me 40 years to actually make him wear a, a jumpsuit, you know? I feel good in it. I, I would wear it out to the street totally. The only thing I have to say is that it's very hard to get in and out. Very hard. You have to shimmy in through here, through this area. And I think you would benefit from a, a zipper here on the side up to there. Just the bodice. And I would have done it and then I was like, no, no, I would just shimmy in, you know, but yeah, I'm definitely making this again and I will consider putting even a small zipper that doesn't reach the arm side, just like in between. I don't know if you've seen that on some dresses, but it's totally doable and it will just give you that space around here to wiggle in easier. Definitely, this is a special uh, occasion thing and I won't be drinking water while I'm wearing it. <laughs> Dehydration, so, you know, yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be hard to get in and out, but hey, it's it's beautiful. I like it. 
I love the fabric. I totally made the right decision in going up a size at the hips for this type of fabric. Um, if I make it in linen, I'll probably just use the 14 totally. And I absolutely love it. Now the next video, you're going to see a different jumpsuit made in knit fabric. And I am on the fence about it. I am on the fence. I am on the fence about calling it a fail. So <laughs> keep your eyes peeled for that. That is the next video talking about the next jumpsuit I made. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.